Savior, like the shepherd leads us, but we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us, or our youth thy folks prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, by thou hast bought us thy we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thy we are. Blessed we are thine, that us be friend of us, be the guardian of our way. Keep thy flock from sin, defend of us, because when we go astray, blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear our hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Early let us seek thy favor, early let us do thy will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with thy love our bosoms filled. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divine is calm, here by faith in Him to dwell. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, cheers each wide, a path I tread. Give me grace for every trial, feed me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter, and my soul a thirst may be, Gushing from the rock before me, flow a spring of joy I see. Gushing from the rock before me, flow a spring of joy I see. All the way my Savior leads me, oh, the fullness of His love. Perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit clothed immortal brings its flight to realms of day, this my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. He leadeth me, O oh, blessed thought, O oh, word, with heavenly comfort brought. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful armor I would be, for by His hand He leadeth me. Sometimes amid scenes of deepest gloom, sometimes where He does bowers bloom. By water still, or trouble see still, tis his hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful power I would be, for by his hand. 
deal me with me. And when my task on earth is done, when by thy grace the victory is won, he does go away, but will not please his God through Jordan lead a deep. He lead us me, he lead us me back his own, and he lead us me. His faith of power I would be for back his and he lead us me. Be not dismayed, whatever ye tie, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through every day or all the way, He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through days of toil, when hard does fail, God will take care of you when danger figures your path assail God will take care of you God will take care of you through every day or all the way he will Take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast, God will take care of you, God will take care of you, through every day, or all the way, he will take care of you, God will take care of you. You. <clears throat> For our special music this morning, one that I sang growing up, it's not in the 76 model or 75 model, whatever it is, Baptist hymnal. <laughs> but we sang it when I was a kid growing up, and it fits real well in with the message today. Oh, to be like the blessed Redeemer. This is my constant longing and prayer. Gladly I'll forfeit all of earth's treasures. Jesus, thy perfect likeness to wear. Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer. Pure as thou art, come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be, <coughs> oh, to be like thee, full of compassion, loving, forgiving. Tender and kind, helping the helpless, cheering the fainting, seeking the wandering 
sinner to find. Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be like thee, while I am pleading, pour out thy spirit, fill with thy love. Make me a temple, me for thy dwelling, fit me for life and heaven above. Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stand thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Do you want to be like Jesus? Do you want to be like God? <clears throat> I think that's a worthy desire because that's what God wants from us. That's what Jesus wants from us. He wants us to be more like him every day. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. For this reason... I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Filled with all the fullness of God. A lot of people call it filled with the Spirit. The Spirit of God, God's Holy Spirit dwells within us. Do we make room? And I'm getting ahead of myself. We all want Christ to dwell in our hearts, don't we? We all want to be rooted and grounded in love, don't we? We all want to be able to comprehend the love of Christ, don't we? We all want to be filled up to all the fullness of God, don't we? We don't want to be running on empty. Reminds me of a Jackson Brown song, running on empty. We don't want to be like that. What is the fullness of God? Many religions, and I'm not talking about denominations, I'm talking about world religions. Many religions have holy places, holy sites, holy buildings in their belief system. And you have to go to that place to be filled with whatever they offer. Muslims go to Mecca. Buddhists, now I can't say this name right, Bad Gaya, the place of his enlightenment. The Jews, the Western Wall, the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. God chose each and every one of us to be his dwelling place. How cool is that? God wants us to be his dwelling place. Oh, that opens up some... Interesting thoughts. We don't have to go anywhere. God resides within us. God don't reside at the church house. The church where we may have attended in the past, God don't live there. God lives within each and every one of us, and we bring God with us when we go there. But God doesn't live in that church house. That's just a place for convenience 
for God's people to meet. God resides within us, but God doesn't force his way in. You have to welcome him in. Galatians 3.25, now that this faith has come, we are no longer, longer under a guardian. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. Jesus is the only way to welcome God in. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. So now that we understand the way to be filled with God, to come to God, what is the fullness of God? God desires to fill us with the fullness of himself. Now, people like to talk about being filled with the Spirit. When we receive Jesus, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you, you can't get a little bit of it, you get all of it. There, there's no different denominations of, as in fractions. You get all of it. But what percentage do we allow to be controlled by the Spirit. That's what we're talking about today, being filled with God as in being controlled by God. John chapter 14, verse 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, what then has happened that you're going to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. We need to learn God's commandments and then keep them. That begins the process of obtaining the fullness of God. It says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our abode with him. Make our abode with him. The him is us. It's talking to us. We, that's God, Jesus and God. We'll make our abode with him, that being us. God moves in. Make our abode with him. God moves in. That's an interesting concept. God moving in and taking over. Some of us have a lot of junk taking up the space. The space where God is going to dwell. We got a lot of junk. Now I think about the story about the fellow that had $15 worth of junk completely filling his garage in his house. Then he had a $60,000 car parked out in the weather. And that's kind of like, we laugh, that's funny, but that's kind of like some of us are. We are so full of junk in our life. And I'm not talking about bad stuff necessarily. I'm talking about just cares of the world, things that are bothering us, things that we are interested in. Did we leave room? For the Holy Spirit? Did we leave room for God? He wants to come dwell within us. Did we leave room for him? That's why we need to make room. God wants to move in with us. But think about it. Do you really want God moving in? If God were visibly going to come visit, as in God becoming a man and walking among us and coming to your house, you remember Zacchaeus, Jesus said, I'm coming to your house for tea. Or however it was, that's the little song we sang. But Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house. You really want God coming to your house? Would you might maybe want to make some changes before he got there? You see, that's kind of foolish of us. That's foolish thinking because God 
is everywhere. The old song goes, he's here and there and everywhere and all the ways I've tried. I've never passed beyond the sphere of the providence of God. God is everywhere. So whatever it is you're doing, God already knows about it because he's standing right here, right now. And he sees every one of us. <laughs> but we might need to make some room for God within us. If you want God, if you want to be filled with the Spirit, if you want to be filled with God, if you want to know the fullness of God, you might need to make a little room. God's desire is to make you His holy home and fill you with all the fullness of Himself. If you feel God calling you into a more holy and intimate relationship with Him, that's the Holy Spirit calling you to be who God wants you to be. That is a godly desire. That is how we should feel if you desire to be filled with the fullness of God. No matter how long we've been Christians, no matter how full we think we are right now, there's always room for more. More about Jesus would I know. More of his grace to others show. More of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. As I was preparing this message, all these hymns came to mind that we sang for years. They, they, these hymns were preaching to us this very concept. We sang them for years. Did we take it in? Did we internalize what these hymns were saying about how God wants to come in and take over complete control? But it all boils down to love because God is love. Come let us all rejoice and sing. God is love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Repeat. If you love me and will keep my commandments... But now, let's keep in mind, as I always tell you, that obedience doesn't save us. What saves us? Ephesians chapter 2, 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith that is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. The lesson today is not about salvation. It is about obtaining more of God, being more like God, being who God wants us to be every day. Closer day by day to being like God. Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee. Blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness. Come in thy fullness. Stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Stamp God's image on our heart. Kind of like being branded. We willingly accept his brand, his mark. You know, back in the day they used to, I don't know if they do it anymore. They probably got a microchip or something but they take that hot branding iron and put it on that cow's hide and it would leave a mark so that everybody that sees that mark would realize that that cow belonged to a certain person. Now what is this, what is this stamp? What is this brand? What is this mark that God wants to put on us? God is love. God's brand on us is the love that we show others. When others see our lives and see the love that we live. That's just like looking at a brand on a cow. They know that we belong to God because of the love that we have. And, and I hate to say it, but if you look the other way at it, if they don't see the love in us, they're not going to think we belong to God. Closer day by day to being like God. God is love. That's who we want to be. We want to be filled with God such that there is no room for anything else. We want to be filled so full of God's love that the people around us notice it and wonder what's going on with us. John chapter 1, verse 16, for of his fullness 
We have all received and grace upon grace for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. God's fullness, endless fullness, my cup runneth over. God's got plenty and he wants us to have it. Grace upon grace. That's what saves us. That's what caused God to send Jesus. Wanted us to have his grace and mercy. And we should want to be filled with it just like God is. Closer every day to being like God. And we'll never get there. We're never going to be 100%. But that's no reason to be satisfied with where we are. Every day we should wake up saying, I want to draw closer to God today than I was yesterday. I want to do better today than I did yesterday. We should never be satisfied. There's always more. We can always draw closer to the example. Where he leads, I'll follow. Follow all the way. Follow Jesus every day. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12. For the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the measure of a stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of man, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. It makes me think about years ago I had a small sailboat and I was out in the, one of the small bays in Galveston and a storm came up out of nowhere. And man, I was getting tossed around by the wind. It was scary. How often in our lives are we tossed about by life's winds? We have situations and circumstances that come up and they toss us around. What can we do to be prepared? What can we do to be able to stand up to all of that? The fullness of God makes provision. It builds up the body of Christ, the church. As I said, the church is made up of each one of us all put together. The church. To attain the unity of faith. The only way we're ever going to attain unity is by being filled with God. By being filled with God's Holy Spirit. Attain the knowledge of the Son of God. Become a mature person. You say, well, Brother David, I'm 80 years old. I believe I'm, I believe I'm as mature as I'm going to get. I'm not talking about physical maturity. We're talking about spiritual maturity. I know I'm not there yet, but I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I, I'm taking baby steps. But I'm, I'm working my way towards spiritual maturity. No longer children. One scripture talks about, about people that, that ought to be handling the meat of the word, but they're still having to, having to drink milk like a little baby. That's some of us. And I think, in reality, all of us at one time or another, we're having to, having to sip on that milk instead of, instead of having the meat of the word. I don't think it's, a, it's 100% because we, we, as humans, we kind of like trying to get ducks in a row. There's always somebody stepping out of line. One day I'm strong and you're weak, and one day you're strong and I'm weak. No longer tossed here by the waves. Now we're talking about things that being filled with God, filled with the Spirit, is going to help you with. No longer tossed here and there by the waves. No longer carried about by every wind of doctrine or the trickery of men. Sometimes, see, some of these, uh, some of these TV preachers, they kind of wander off into areas that, that, that just might be a wind of doctrine or a trick, even a trickery of men. And the politicians, that's, that's, their, that's their norm. That's, that's, that's how they work. We don't want to be like politicians, do we? No, we don't want to be politicians. We want to be, be what you see is what you get, the same every day. Being filled with God will get us there or get us closer. 
I know that I want to be full of God. That means I won't be full of myself and the world. So if we're harboring, harboring selfishness or envy, that, that takes up space that God wants. We need to weed that out. We need to pray to God to help us make room. You know, but it's going to take a little bit of effort by ourselves. I like to talk about the power steering on your car. You got a powerful hydraulic pump. Some of the new ones have an electric motor. Powerful hydraulic pump, and there's tremendous power available to turn them wheels. But it don't do nothing. It doesn't do anything until you turn that wheel. And that wheel is real easy to turn because it initiates that power steering pump. And you see, that's how it is with us. In our own strength, we're helpless. We have no power of our own, but the Holy Spirit within us gives us complete power. But we have to take that first step and then the Holy Spirit kicks in just like that power steering pump and gives us the strength to overcome, to be filled with God. Philippians chapter 3, verse 18. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. Their glory, they glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. There are some horrible people, enemies. He, Paul, Paul says they are enemies of the cross of Christ. <clears throat> what does it mean that God is their belly? It means they're selfish. And they even glory in their shame. We've seen a lot of that recently. Arrogant, flaunting their rebellion. You might say, Brother David, that's not me at all. But, and I don't believe it is any of you, but is there any little section of our heart that leans the least little bit in that direction? Does that take up room that God wants to take over? Is there that one little thing that we need to confess to God and ask him to forgive us and ask him to rid it of, rid us of it so that he can fill us completely full. That's what we're talking about this morning, being filled with God completely. If we enjoy God's fullness, it leads us away from such things. Our citizenship is in heaven. I sing a few songs about going home. And I'm not talking about my house in Dayton. I'm talking about home up there in heaven where God has made a place for me. Our citizenship is not of this world. It's not supposed to be. Our citizenship is in heaven. And right now, we're here doing God's work on this earth. It's what we're supposed to be doing. And when God calls us home, we're going to go to be with him in heaven. That's home. That's our true home. This is our temporary home. These bodies are our temporary bodies. We're going to get a new body and we're going to go home to be with Jesus. I don't want my end to be destruction as Paul was describing these people who were enemies of the cross. I want God's fullness to fill me to the fullest and it'll keep me on the straight and narrow. We need to keep our gas tanks on F instead of E. Full instead of empty. Just like when we're getting ready for a hurricane, you go out and you make sure your gas tank's full. There's a hurricane every day in our lives. God needs to be full. We need to be full of his spirit and be prepared for whatever Satan throws at us. I want to keep my tank full every day, and I hope you'll do the same. Amen? Amen.
Amen. Well, let's sing some more songs. Talking about being filled 